Hello and welcome. Welcome to the Blessed Podcast, where we join Jesus, where he is already at work, where we live, learn, work, and play. At Love KC, we believe that every person should hear the good news of Jesus from a friend. If that's going to happen, it will take all of us. The letters B L E S S in the Bless Podcast stand for Begin with Prayer, Listen to God and to those around you, Eat Together, Serve, and Share. Share your story and share his story. As always, we have free resources to help you live on mission at our website, lovekc.net, and there you can find upcoming events. We interview a wide range of people on the Blessed Podcast, well-known authors, speakers, and leaders, plus everyday people, because we want you to meet those you might not get to meet on your own, and we want you to be able to identify with someone a lot like you. Our podcast drops the 15th and 30th of the month. Thanks for listening. Please subscribe and share. Now let's jump into this episode of the Blessed Podcast with your host, Gary Kendall, and co-host, Samantha Ling Krebs. Well, welcome to the Blessed Podcast, where we join Jesus, where he's already at work, where we live, learn, work, and play. And uh, today we welcome Gerard Long from Prayer at the Heart. Welcome, Gerard. Hey, Gary. It's great to be with you. Thanks for inviting me. Uh, We're looking forward to this. If you're joining today and this is one of your first times, I want to encourage you to subscribe to the Blessed Podcast. You can find it at Apple and you can find it on the Google Play uh, station, Play Station, sorry, Google Play is what I meant to say. That's I've I've been hanging with my grandkids, Gerard. So (laughs) I understand. (laughs) Yes, Google Play or um, a lot of people connect with us at Love KC Living on Mission, our Facebook group. It's a place where we want to build community. You can post, you can uh, comment, you can like, you can share. And we encourage you to do so so that we build this community of people who love Jesus and want to be able to share him with their friends. And so we, we welcome you as you're joining today. Let's get going. Gerard, I'd love for you to tell people a little bit about who you are so they have some background on Gerard Long. Sure. Well, I will do. Yeah, I'll, I'll go back. I think probably best to go back to when I have an encounter with God in 1980. Yes, a long, long, long time ago. And uh, I had given my heart to the Lord as a young boy from a Christian, a strong Christian family going back centuries. Um, but I, 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 Jesus was my savior, but he, he was never my Lord. And I came to a point of total repentance. Uh, my last year at college, there was no one else around. I was off college, actually living in a the house there. And uh, through, the, through the Lord brought me to that point of total surrender. And I, I, he filled my heart with his love. I know now it was the Holy Spirit doing that. I wept like a child. I was captain of the track team, one of the lads on campus. And um, But the Lord, this, this amazing liquid love filled my heart. And many things happened in that, in, in that time. But two particular seeds are worth mentioning. Well, number one, uh, in falling head over heels in love with Jesus, I, my, my one desire was his glory. I just wanted to his, his beauty, his loveliness, his excellence to be seen by others. And I simply started praying there. Um, really, it was a prayer for a great awakening. I, I didn't know the technical term at the time, yeah. but it was simple logic that says, Lord, if you can do this for me, you can do this for everybody. Just your really? presence coming, uh, convicting of sin and leading people to repentance and turning their lives over to God through Jesus. Um, and that was the prayer I started praying. The, the other thing that, that was so into my heart, I, I understood that, you, if Jesus was going to be revealed in this in in me in this vessel that I needed to die, I don't know why I had that revelation. Maybe it was because I was understanding athletics. You've got to break the muscles down to build up. I don't know, but I knew that I had to to die to self, and uh, I knew that I was desperately proud and so many things needed sorting out. So I started to pray a prayer, and I prayed it. I've prayed it really since then, but particularly in the in the first twenty four years after that. Lord, break me down that your glory might be seen. Right. Some people would say that's a dangerous prayer, and it is really, but but eternity will tell whether it's a wise prayer. It's beautiful, yeah. <laughs> so anyway, lots of things happen. We uh, I ended up marrying a beautiful young lady. We ended up, ended up being a pastor in London for 22 years. Uh, I was bivocational, so I was working in the banking industry as well. 
I did that for 30 years. Um, and in that time, I saw God move at various times. Uh, seasons when in our church, in the city even, we had a mini revival in the early 90s when we started praying in, in the workplace for God's kingdom to come. Uh, there were times when people were getting saved, and it was, it was wonderful to see that. But it was never at the, 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 num the numbers I had in my mind. Mm -hmm. um, I, at that point, I started to understand a bit about revival. Typically, we think about revival of, of Christians being revived. You can't really revive something that's never been alive. So right. revival associated with the church, awakening on a wider scale. People mix them up, so it doesn't really matter. So um, but then in, in 2005, I started going through a season of, of total brokenness. Mm. But the Lord had, had, had given me a heads up. I, very clearly, I, felt, I heard the Lord's voice saying, Gerald, you're going to go through a season of brokenness, wow. but through it, I will glorify my name. I didn't understand what it meant. I told Jeannie she didn't understand what it meant. But sure enough, from 2005, everything started, like Job, started to go, d go wrong. And we got to the bottom of the valley when in, at the end of the year, on the 8th of November, our precious youngest son, he was 17 years old. We were planning his 18th birthday. And uh, he was trying to help a boy at school. He took, a, he took some marijuana with his boy at school and uh, ended up committing suicide. He oh, became delusional and paranoid. Total brokenness. Uh, yeah. I don't try and describe the pain. You can't. Um, uh, Jeannie went from shock to horror to anger to hatred. She couldn't well, reconcile serving the Lord with all our hearts for 24 years, how this could have happened right. and how could he be allowed it. You know? And, of course, Satan's all over that, the, the right. accuser of the brethren. You know, why didn't you see it happening? Why didn't you stop it? She hated herself. She hated me. She hated God. And then she lost her faith for for two years. And uh, it was just, I used to get up in the middle of the night, go down to my study and cry until I had no more tears to cry. And uh, the Lord turned up. He's, he is close to the brokenhearted. I can yes, say that unequivocally. Is. His presence came. And uh, I had three epiphanies. One was of, of his grace, one of eternity, and one of his heart for the, for the suffering. I won't go into all the details. Um, and shortly after that, I was asked to, to lead Alpha USA. We'd, we'd run Alpha. We'd run over 50 Alpha courses. And um, uh, so, because I had this epiphany of, of eternity, uh, it seemed mm -hmm. such the right thing to do. So I stepped down from my banking career and went, went, went uh, to, to serve in Alpha for eight years. And that was a, that was a precious time. But the suffering didn't end. Two, two months after Alex, my sister died of cancer. Shortly after that, my brother died of cancer. Jeannie's nephew died in a car accident. And then uh, eight years later, our beautiful daughter, Rebecca, who had come to join me in Alpha, actually, she uh, um, had a tragic accident and ended up getting hypothermia and she drowned in, in, Lake, in Lake Michigan. I'm so sorry. And we were plunged into, to, to, uh, again into the darkness. Jeannie was rescued, and I'm, I'm cutting a lot of the story because for time reasons, but... She had an encounter with God. It was he who was the only one who could have rescued her. Uh, she wasn't listening to me. She had stopped talking. It was only God turning up, and he did. Oh, that's beautiful. Turned up, and she had this encounter and was completely transformed. And so there we were, just broken vessels. Lord, um, here we are, whatever you want to do with our, with our brokenness. And we felt the Lord calling us to start a ministry called Awakening to God Ministry. You see, the awakening had been growing inside of me, this, this, this longing for people Right. For God's presence to come, for God's presence to come. And uh, so she, we started the ministry called Awakening to God Ministry to help, based on Isaiah 61, 1 to 4, to help the, the poor and the brokenhearted, the captives and the prisoners. 2017, we decided to, uh, to go to the island of Lewis. That was the last place of a great awakening in the British Isles. Uh, we mm -hmm. went with our mum and we wanted to meet two people to ask them, what was it like? when yeah. the presence of God came. And we met Harold and Agnes there, uh, sweet, sweet time. Uh, they prayed for us. They described this amazing sense of God's presence. Um, How old were they at that time? They were in the mid eighties now. Yeah, yeah. They were teenagers. They came to the Lord in, as teenagers. And um, they prayed for us. We all wept. It was very, very special. 2019, I had this season of intercession where I had this great, great burden to pray for an awakening. I should get up in the middle of the night and weep. Lord, Lord, send this awakening. Give us justice against our adversary. I was praying along the Luke 18. 
And uh, at the end of, of several weeks, the Lord just spoke to me and said, Gerald, your, your prayers have been heard. It will happen in my time. Wow, what a promise. Yeah. Uh, later that year, October 26th, I had this massive cardiac arrest. I really believe Satan was trying to take me out. Um, I died for 30 minutes. They couldn't revive me. Um, and again, in, the Lord intervened. I won't go into the details, but I'm still here. <laughs> still wow. here. 20, wow. 2021, we go back to the UK to look after our mums. Uh, the Lord in that time gives, gives me this vision of these angels circling around overhead, like, like an aeroplane waiting to land when there's a, you know, can't, wow. waiting for a gap. It's waiting for a space wow. to land. And the Lord just said to me, Gary, he just said, uh, when my people align with my word, it will open up a portal for the armies of heaven to be released. Wow. Didn't understand what it meant at the time. Later that year, I was called, I was asked to come and uh, serve with um, prayer at the heart. I, would have, I normally say no to those things because we had our own ministry. But at the end of this text I got in the middle of the night was, it's about a great awakening. Wow. And I, I, was, I was arrested with those words. <laughs> and so shared it with Jeannie. She said, yes, even though she was in the middle of cancer treatment, she said, yes, we've got to do this, Jared. So we came over, we dropped everything, came over, and that's how we started serving uh, with Prayer at the Heart, the mission of which is to ignite a great awakening through a national movement of humble, unified, desperate prayer and action. Wow. Uh, so that's, that's how I came to be serving. That's, our, that's the heart of this great awakening. I've had it since 1980. And I believe, and I, th I believe you do, Karen, I know many others, but I believe we're, we're just starting to see the first fruits of, of yeah. something very special. Yeah, that's beautiful, Gerard. And I know I've heard parts of the story multiple times. I don't know if I've ever heard them like all strung together like that. So thank you for, for sharing it. I think it gives us a great insight to the, the things that you're doing now. I definitely want to hear about the 30 minute prayer challenge, but take just a moment and talk about what happened in Ohio with the yeah. tents, because I think that was a, a very unusual. I mean, if you looked at the way man plans things, I don't know if anybody would have planned it that way, but yeah. Um, yeah. you felt led that that way and others did too. And God, God blessed it. So tell us a little bit of that story. Well, when I came on, Prayer of the Heart started in 2021 with a, a, a gathering of 3,000 Christians in the geographic center of America, Lebanon in Kansas, and uh, crying out. It was a solemn assembly, really, crying out for, for the Lord to have mercy upon us, repenting, cry, crying out for a great awakening. They asked me to come on board to do solemn assemblies in every state and every county and every city across America. So I started in 2022. Um, when we first came over, they said you can be based anywhere in the U.S. We thought New York because we had friends in New York, big metropolis, seems obvious. Every door closed. And then it was very clear that he was leading us to Cleveland, Ohio. Now, I, I didn't realize seemed, at the time. It seemed, it seemed obvious, but every door was closed. <laughs> I didn't realize that Cleveland, Ohio, all these very unkind things are said about it. You know, uh, does anything right. good come out of Cleveland and all of these? But that's the sort of place that God loves to turn up. Uh, he, he loves to turn up and show his glory. It can only be God. So he, I started working there, but halfway through the year, it became very clear that the Lord was calling us to do something very special there, to do a pilot, in fact, uh, to a city-county pilot on how the church can uh, align with his word. When, when I first joined, it was prayer, but they said, if, you're, if you feel God leading you to change the strategy, fine. And I realized the Lord was, was making it very clear. That it's got to be prayer and action. Luke, Luke 10, 2, Jesus says, uh, pray, pray the folks talking to his disciples, pray the Father for workers, the uh, harvest is plentiful, the, the, the workers are few. The next verse, he says, okay, now you're going to be the answer to the prayer. <laughs> Off you go. <laughs> and I want you to be my hands and feet. Right. And, the significance of that verse, Gary, is it, that's, that those two chapters, 9 and 10, I believe Jesus has given the strategy for, for the church to do what he's called us to do from the beginning. The, the early church turned the world upside down. There are parts around the world today where the church is turning 
the society upside down. Even in northern Nigeria, where there's tremendous Islam there, the church is exploding there. They're following what Jesus told us to do. Mm -hmm. But then in other parts, uh, like the West, for example, where, when you look at what Jesus told us and what we're doing, we're way off. Mm -hmm. We're way off. So I realized that God was, was, was giving us a strategy. In, in Luke 9, he, he says to his disciples, go. And then, and then he says to the 70 in the next chapter to, to, to go and do the same thing, show people my love. Now, we have to step back a minute and say, what, what is happening over America at the moment, over the West? And we realize it's darkness, isn't it? Absolute, absolute darkness has, has descended upon the people. Ephesians 6, 12. Um, that's where our battle is. It's not flesh and blood. It's these demonic forces. I saw that sort of darkness come over Jeannie after Alex committed suicide. And the Lord said to me, George, keep loving her because in my love is light. Mm. Yes, I, saw it first, I saw it firsthand. And as I kept on loving her, bit by bit, her thinking changed because that's mm. what Satan does. He blinds people's minds, doesn't he? Right. To the things of the kingdom of God. They don't see it. That's why there's crazy things going on now across America. How can people think that? Well, it's because of the demonic forces, the, the right. dark forces blinding right. them to the things of God. So he, he's given us in Luke 9 and Luke 10 the strategy because we carry light. Right. Matthew 5, 14, Christians, you are the light of the world. Next, the next two verses, verse 16, let your light shine before men that they may see your good deeds, glorify your Father in heaven. So when he sends the 70 out, they, they go through the land, show them my love, I'm paraphrasing a bit, they come back to him. The first thing that Jesus says, now many of the commentators miss it, Spurgeon and others don't. He says to them, I saw Satan fall like lightning from the heavens. Right, right. There's a clearing out. When light goes, there's no argument. Satan has to go. That's why there's been such a battle over unity. And there's been such a battle over prayer and such a wow. battle wow. over the Great Commission. Wow. So what we did in, 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 uh, in this pilot in Northeast Ohio was we wanted to see Christians coming together. This was the measure that Billy Graham used. It's not, you know, what your thoughts on eschatology or baptism or whatever, the Eucharist. It's, do, you know, do you know Jesus? Have you received Jesus as your savior? Right. And so th that's it. If you're, the, the, the scripture we often quote in the Old Testament for the Great Awakening was Second Chronicles 7, 14. If my people, straight away unity, if my right. people. Right. Call by my name or humble themselves, pray, seek my face, seek my presence, that means, turn from their wicked or selfish ways, I'll come and heal the land. He's given us the blueprint. He's given us the strategy. Just we have to do it. Right. So we saw Christians coming together from all backgrounds, all denominations. The one area we didn't see that is happening now is the Orthodox Church, but we asked them several times, but it's starting to happen now. From all and ethnicities, so African Americans, Caucasian, Latinos, coming together, mm -hmm. and we did what we did was forty days of prayer, care, share all around Northeast Ohio. We had ten tents of meeting, tents of meeting, of course, where you come and you, you experience the presence of God. And then right. we had a gathering in the public square in Cleveland, and God moved. I, I, I mean, there's, there's too much to explain it all, but God moved. And people were getting saved, people were getting healed, people were getting delivered, and it was so powerful. And it's carrying on now. Mm. What they did was that, that we, we've got a, a leadership team, because God called us after that, near the end of the year, to come down to Charlotte in North Carolina. Mm -hmm. um, and he started to move in a very special way here. But they're carrying on the work, this leadership team, the Christians from across all backgrounds are carrying it on, and it's, it's, it's growing. It's growing. Yeah, that's so that's what, we did. that's what we did in, in mm. Northeast Ohio. Yeah. Yeah, I love it. I love the fact that you felt like you had a God-directed plan. You went after it. Uh, God honored your faith and obedience. He showed up in powerful ways. People got saved in the tents. There was worship. There was prayer. The followers of Jesus, you know, their their light became brighter. Yes. And uh, then you're able to hand it off. But talk about the the prayer challenge. I've, I've been yeah. really interested in the 30-minute uh, prayer challenge. The second night we were here in Charlotte, the Lord woke me up in the middle of the night and uh, downloaded this strategy. And it sort of completes the model that, that, that we've got. We've got a template now for city, county 
outreach to the church, prayer, unity, and, and reaching out. What this piece does is adds the, I believe, the organic uh, local piece that's so, so important. And it comes back, it's, it's based on the theology of, of place, uh, Acts 17, 26, he's determining our times and our places. And uh, it basically, it means that where we are living and where we are working is not a coincidence. It hasn't just happened, but God has been over it all the time, over our decision. I do love that scripture. You do you love it? Yeah, I agree. I agree. With you. Yeah. Yeah. So, so once we start walking in faith, realizing that we realize that in our neighborhoods, in our communities, our other Christians, and probably going to a whole range of different churches, it brings unity to where we're placed. Mm -hmm. Very hard to get Christians working together. Occasionally you get the pastors working together, but get the laity from different churches working together because they're so engaged in their Right. They're fought in the four walls of whatever they're doing. It, you know, it's it typically silent. Now, some churches are reaching out, don't get me wrong, but it's the unity piece which is so powerful. So powerful, the unity. So the 30-minute prayer challenge is saying, start by praying for where God's placed you in your where you live and where you work, and go through the Lord's Prayer. So, first of all, it's not praying for Auntie Auntie Jill and first off. No, the first thing is we exhort Jesus. <laughs> over where we live um you, our father uh, who art in heaven <laughs> hallowed be your name so we're first of all exalted lord you are the king of kings you're the lord so we broke broke up the lord's prayer into six segments and the people pray through those segments um and of course it comes to let your kingdom come let your your kingdom come in my community name the community in my street for my neighbors, let your will be done here, Lord, as it is in heaven. We're praying what Jesus told us to pray. And the idea then is that you gather other Christians. You can start with two. It could be a husband and wife. And you start praying together. And then you invite other Christians you meet in your neighborhood. I'm starting it where we are here. So many people want to do this. It's incredible. Yeah. Uh, they, they're looking for something. They know, they know that things aren't right. And there's nothing seems to be changed. I believe this is the key to help it change. So we come together. We pray. When we get to 12, we multiply. Okay. And we go wider. Now you go further afield and you, then you form other groups and then you go. For, so until the whole of America is covered by Christians in unity, praying together for God's kingdom to come, seeking his face, seeking his presence. And then uh, every month, the groups in that community come together specifically to pray about the needs of that community, because God wants us to be where well, he's ecclesia. He's called out ones to reveal his glory, to reveal his kingdom. So what are the needs? Loneliness, addictions, marriage breakup, on and on. It could be all mental health issues, could be all sorts of things. Okay, Lord, lead us, guide us in this. And then how do you want us to actually meet those needs? Could be like we did in, in, in Northeast Ohio, could be a tender meeting where you call people in, get the specialists in to meet those needs. Could be cookouts, could be door to door, could be all sorts of things. And in our template, we've got ideas of what people can use. And so then, uh, so they're reaching out to the communities from community to community. The church, the Christians are reaching out. And then we've got some basic foundations training on our website. So as they, people get saved, um, they can get set that basic training and then they get introduced to uh, local churches uh, going on, as it were, from there. So yeah, it's, I love the, it's mobilizing I love the, Christians. Yeah, I love the way, Gerard, that um, what you're doing there is so similar to the Acts 2 church. Yes, yes. So it's very organic in the sense that every disciple is called to live on mission, mm. you know, right where they live, learn, work and play. And that disciples begin to join together and become missional communities. And then in their community, they can do more together than they can do alone. Yes. And uh, then God begins to draw people to be aware of the fact that these people love like no one else. You know, they begin to ask why. Yes. And then God begins to speak through their, their own personal story and tell this. And then they tell the story of Jesus. Yes. I, mean, it's, it's, I think it's the way that Christianity has grown from the beginning, you know, Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, yeah. and the world, yes. all the way to where we are today. So I, I love the fact that it, it's really kind of a just a, a helping people return to the original plan. Yes, I, I, I believe so. And I, and I, 
by your love one for another, they'll know you're my disciples. Right. And of course, right. they see the Christians coming together. Oh, you're from all different churches and denominations. You're different colors right. or whatever. Uh, our, one, our one common theme is Jesus. Our one right. common theme is that we love him and we want people to meet with him. Yeah, and, absolutely. Uh, that's, that's, that's what should always have linked us together. And where Christians are doing this around the world, guess what? The kingdom of heaven is, 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 is growing rapidly. Yeah, very true. I know you've been a user of Bless Every Home. Yes. Uh, tell us, tell the listeners why, why that's been helpful to you. Well, it's very helpful to, as, a, as a first for prayer. That, that every day I get five names come into or my neighbors come into my into my computer and my phone and I um Jeannie and I pray with those individuals. Now, of course, as we start working together with other Christians, we can start seeing our whole neighborhood covered by the, through the, through the right. prayers. And but we can pray by name. Now, many of them we've only just arrived, but many of them will know who those individuals are, and so we can be very specific in praying for them. And uh, and of course, then getting into conversation, uh, we can we can share a specific prayer requests where people are comfortable with that, and uh, we can help then where there are specific needs. Uh, helps us to connect more effectively with the the neighbourhood and the neighbours. Where of course new people are coming in, gives us a great opportunity to be able to be proactive in reaching out as God would want us to. We're just, right. bless is a great, I love the Arianic prayer at the end of Numbers 6. The Lord bless you, mm -hmm. keep you, make his face shine upon you, be gracious unto you. So the Christians have got a bad rap, and, and I'm for, I, I apologize for that. We haven't done a good job yeah. of, of letting people know how wonderful Jesus is. Instead, they think that we're judgmental, we're bigoted, et cetera, et cetera. That's not who Jesus is. Yeah. And, and so we're going to show, show people, let your light shine. They may see your good deeds, glorify your father. Wouldn't it be great if in every city, every foster child was placed into a Christian home? Right. Wouldn't it be great if every addict was delivered? Wouldn't it be great if every mental health issue was solved? Every teenage child who's struggling at the moment with mental health issues uh, could be set free. That's what we've got to be working towards. Right. That's what Jesus is. That's his kingdom, isn't it? And that's, that's what beautiful. we as Christians should be doing. Yeah, that's beautiful, Gerard. I love that. Is there anything that you wanted to share or you hoped I would ask that I didn't ask that you, it's kind of on your heart and you want people to know? Well, I th they, yes. I mean, the, I think the biggest thing I would want uh, to ask is for everybody listening in, to seriously consider starting this 30-minute prayer challenge where you are. The, the quicker that people do this, the quicker the country will be covered uh, in prayer. The great thing about it is that it doesn't need man. It doesn't need any big organization. It doesn't need any money. It's just willing hearts. Psalm 110, verse 3, in the day of my power, my people will be willing. We're not yeah. saying stop any other prayer you're doing. Just, just do this in addition. We can't pray enough. Start it where you are. Go on to our website, www.prayeratheheart.org. Look up New Wineskin uh, at the menu at the top, and then you'll see on there the 30-minute prayer challenge. It explains it very – this is so simple. Children can do this. Yeah. Um, and, and so we, we're just encouraging you to start it and then let it grow. And, hey, it doesn't have to be under prayer of the heart. It's just that we're Christians are doing this. It's right. just that it's spreading across the nation that people can meet with Jesus. So That's please, beautiful. please consider it humbly, humbly. We ask you to consider it that we may win this country for Jesus and drive out the darkness. Right. This is the, this is the only way is, is a great awakening. And I believe as we align with God's word, what he's, what he's told us to do, his promise, which we can stand upon, I'll come and heal your land. Right. Right. It's time. It's time. It's a, one of the things, the cards we use, I've got one of them here, I think. Yes. We use this in, in Northeast Ohio, and it simply says that it's, it's time. Oh, like that, yeah. It's time for the church to go on the offense. We've been on defense way too long. Now it's about yeah. going and showing people God's love. That's beautiful. Gerard, in uh, Kansas City through Love KC, we've been uh, encouraging people to – to light what we call 1,000 fires. Yeah. And the 1,000 fires is like through the month of March leading up to Easter. Uh, grab someone uh, from your neighborhood 
and pray together for your yeah. for your friends who don't know Jesus and uh, ask that during this time from now till the end of the month that God will reveal himself to your friends and Beautiful. you might be part of the answer to that. But we're praying in Kansas City for 1,000 fires. I love that. I love that. <laughs> it sounds really similar to what your 30-minute you prayer I, challenge. I think the Holy Spirit's been working all across, you know, that God's yeah. still doing yes, this. It's, sure. it's uh, uh, unity, prayer, the Great Commission. Right. I remember meeting you the first time in Hollywood at the National Prayer Committee. And That's we stood right. outside and talked for a long time. And... Um, your zeal for God then, you know, till now is ex exemplatory. Thank you for that. You inspire me, you inspire others. And thank you, Gerard. You, you know, if anyone heard your story, the story you told at the beginning, they wouldn't expect to see the light in your eyes and the joy in your face and the, the lightness of your voice. That you know, those, those don't go together with the hardship you've experienced. So we have to say it's it's God, you know, it's yeah. God that's healed, it's God that's filled, it's God that's redeemed, and 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 we know that the ultimate redemption is still to come in heaven. Yeah. There, it gets even better. Like, oh, man. Oh, man. we we, uh, we enjoy God now, but but the um, the best is yet to come. Oh, Amen. So we want to right. see revival before we go, right? Yes, we do. A last <laughs> in gathering of souls, I believe. And I right. believe this next great awakening is going to not go up this and then drop down. It's going to go greater and like a tsunami wave, mm -hmm. greater and greater until Jesus comes back. Oh, I love that. That's love what we that. want. Well, Gerard, thank you for being our guest today. And uh, to those of you who are listening, I want to encourage you to uh, to check out the the show notes for today. We'll post the the um, website that Gerard talked about and give you directions of how to find those things and um, those tools. And we encourage you to, to also use Bust Every Home. It's like Gerard has been doing for a long time. I know in Kansas City, that's a big, uh, big tool for us. It's only a tool. You have to, you have to still use it like a, like a craftsman, you know, yes. is able to use a tool, but it is a tool. And yeah. uh, I, I like to say, Gerard, if I was going to chop down a tree, I have a couple of choices. You know, I can get a hatchet. You know, I can I can try to or I can try to get a chainsaw. You know, yes. uh, I get to choose which tool I want to choose. Yes, but I, that choosing the tool for bless every home gives me the ability to to pray on site with insight. Yes, That's what the super would always say pray on site with insight, and um, God God opens doors. He He's the one who changes hearts. Amen. So thanks for being our guest today. If you're listening, I encourage you to subscribe so that you can get the podcast when they come out. You'll be notified. You can also pass on to others the um, the pod the blessed podcast. Finding it on. At Apple Play, Google Play. You can find it on our um, YouTube channel, Love KC Today. You can find it on Love KC Living on Mission. And uh, what we really want people to do is to, to begin to realize God has called every one of us. He's yeah. gifted us. We all have that call to be a missionary, if you will. And you might be a missionary on your street. You might be a missionary where you live, learn, work, or play. But join God in what he's already doing. Thank you, Gerard. Bless you, Gary. It's been a privilege and a pleasure. Thank you. Uh, blessings to all of you listening, and let's go do what Jesus said. That's it for this episode of The Blessed Podcast. We hope this podcast informed and encouraged you. Remember to subscribe on your favorite format, iTunes, Google Play, or YouTube. If you want to see the interview on Zoom, hop over to our Love KC Living on Mission Facebook group. Have a blessed day.